Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-844. 236-6010-844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, comments, success stories you like to share, which we love hearing, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase your longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866 735 2470. Okay, we are back and welcome once again to the bright side. We've been talking about the whole idea of energy in the body. We talk, we talk about supplements all the time and food all the time and dietary strategies and health strategies. But really at the end of the day, when we're sick, it's an energy phenomena. It's all about energy. The body is an energy transducing system that it takes energy in one form and turns it into energy in another form so that cells can use it. That's what the digestive system does. That's why we're always talking about the digestive system. Food and nutrition are simply ways to get cells, which are the fundamental unit of life in the body. Food and nutrition are simply ways to get these cells, the energy they need to do their work. That's why we eat. Now, I shouldn't say that. That's why we're supposed to eat. We actually eat for other reasons. We eat for brain reasons, but from a strictly biological, physiological body perspective, the job of food, the only job of food is to provide cells, the unit of life, the fundamental unit of life with the energy they need to do their business, whatever business that is. The food we eat is designed to provide muscle cells, the energy they need to muscle, that is to contract and relax. The food we eat is designed to provide brain cells the energy to conduct electrical energy so we can think or move for that matter. Whatever cell you're talking about, whether it's a skin cell or a liver cell or a bone cell, it's designed to do its business, to be a skin cell, to do what skin cells do or to do a liver, be a liver cell, do what liver cells do, which is hundreds of different things. Cells do all these different things, by the way. They don't just do one thing. And all these, these uh, functions or behaviors require energy and that energy comes from food and that's what food's supposed to be. It's the digestive system that's responsible for turning food in the macro sense, our hamburgers and our broccoli and our hot dogs and our butter and all the zillions of things we eat into microscopic food, cell food that the cell can use to produce and direct energy. Digestion is the link between what we do on a big scale, macro scale and a small scale, a cellular scale. In other words, this digestion and food represent how our lifestyle, whether it's the food we eat or the supplements we take, the digestive system is the link between how our lifestyle affects our cells. It's the digestive tract, which runs from the mouth to the other end, that magically transforms people food into cell food. And then cells take that cell food and turn it into energy. The people food 
is basically the energy part of the people food of people food is the protein, the fats and the carbs, the protein and the fats and the carbs represent energy, pure energy. That's what they are. They are different forms of energy, but ultimately they're just energy. And then the protein and fats and carbs get processed in the digestive system. What's left behind gets to the cell. The cell turns that little, the little building block components, the amino acids, the fatty acids, the simple sugars into energy. And then it turns that energy into something called ATP. And then it uses that ATP, but it's all about the digestive system. Food is nothing but stored energy plus supportive directing cofactors. I, I take that back. Food is supposed to be nothing but stored energy and supportive cofactors. The supportive cofactors we call vitamins and minerals, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. Those are the supportive cofactors. The food is supposed to be nothing but stored energy and the mighty 90 essential nutrients. Today's food, and by today I'm talking about starting maybe 100 years ago, maybe more, maybe about 120, 130 years ago, today's food contains extra stuff that the body has to detoxify, that the body has to eliminate, flavor enhancers, texturizers, softeners, preservatives, none of which the body has any use for. That all has to be detoxified by the liver. I'm not going to get into that. That's another story for another time, but let's just say there's a lot more to the food we eat, unfortunately, than our body has use for. This is why it's important to eat stuff that's not processed, not hev that's not heavily processed. And that includes heat, by the way, as heavily processed. So the three main energy components of foods, you got your carbs, you got your protein, you got your fat. The energy in these kinds of foods is measured by something called calories. Vitamins and minerals don't have calories. You're only going to find calories in the protein, the fat, and the carbs. Calories equal energy. A calorie is a unit of energy. Isn't it interesting? We always talk about calories, but we never really, nobody ever tells us what they are. You ever wonder how they measure a calorie? How do they know a banana has 60 calories or 70 calories or whatever it has in it? How do they know that a piece of apple pie has 500 calories in it? How do they know that a McDonald's hamburger has, or a McDonald's Big Mac has 600 or 700 calories in it? What the heck is that about? Calories, a unit of heat. It's a unit of, a unit of energy that's measured as a unit of heat. And the way they determine how many calories are in a food is in something called a calorimeter, a calorie meter. This calorie meter is basically a piece of equipment. You put your food in the bottom of it, and then you burn the food, whatever food, your pizza, or your hamburger, or your banana, or whatever it is. You stick the food in this little calorimeter, this little device, and then you burn it. And then there's a water on top of the, of the place where you're burning the food. And depending on how fast or how much that water boils or how much heat that water takes, that's how they measure calories. So calories technically the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of that water by one gram, uh, to raise one gram of that water by one degree. So it's just a measurement of calories, a calories, just a measurement of how fast or how much it makes water boil or water heat, I should say. And it's all measured in this device called a calorimeter. Calories, uh, carbs have about four calories per gram. Protein has around three or four calories per gram. But with fats, we hit the energy jackpot. Fats have twice as much energy, over twice as much energy as protein. Uh, or, or carbs, nine calories per gram. So fats are the mother load of energy. From an energy perspective, it's all about fats. The body loves fats. But, and this is a big but, because fats are so energy rich, they're also problematic. In nutrition, chemistry, when something has a lot of energy associated with it, it's good and it's bad. It's good because it's a great source of energy and, and ultimately everything that happens in the body needs energy. So it's a, it's a, it's the jackpot really, but all that energy can create damage if it's not handled correctly, which is why you'll hear nutritionists say avoid fats, especially super high energy fats, like liquid vegetable oils, liquid vegetable oils are super high energy, which is why you got to keep them in the fridge to kind of cool them down, to calm them down. And that's why you don't want to heat them, you heat them. You really amp up the energy. And that's where they become problematic. And this is where, by the way, nature comes to the rescue with things like vitamin E and phytonutrients, which act to calm the energy down that's in fats. Vitamin E is an antioxidant. It calms fats down. So you always want to use vitamin E when you're supplementing with essential fatty acids. And good essential fatty acid supplements will have vitamin E in there to calm the fats down because they're very unstable. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the bright side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. That's truthtreatments.com or retinol 5% gel, retinol 1% gel. If you're looking for high-powered retinol without irritation, if you've tried to use Retin-A in the past, if you know uh, if you know of the importance, you recognize the importance of using topical vitamin A and it's retinol or retinoic acid form, and it is the most important topical ingredient you can use for anti-aging, but you haven't been able to use it in the past, you need to check out our Truth Retinol 1% and 5% gels. They're both available at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, water, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, just vitamin C, medium chain triglycerides, retinol, and my transdermal delivery matrix, and that's it. In our retinol, 1% and 5% gels, you got a whole bunch of vitamin C in there too. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about this idea of the digestive system turning energy from food into cellular energy, trapped energy in food, releasing that energy, and it releases that energy in a very strategic fashion, in a very careful, tightly regulated, tightly organized fashion. It's really quite miraculous how the body releases energy from food. This system, this, this machinery is what we call the digestive system. The digestive system's job in life is to turn food, energy that's trapped in food, sp- uh, particularly fats, protein, and carbohydrates, specifically fats, protein, and carbohydrates into energy that the body can use. Everything else in food is either a cofactor, that's what the vitamins and minerals and the fiber is, and the water, I guess you could say, that's a cofactor, it helps everything work, the water that's in food, that's another really interesting issue about food. Food's supposed to have water in it. Most fresh food has water in it to the extent it's not fresh, to the extent it doesn't have water in it. And processed food has very little water in it, which is why, at least trapped water, bound water, which is why you want to drink water with your meals. If you boil pasta, you're going to get water in the pasta, but it's not trapped water the way water is trapped in fruits and vegetables. What makes fruits and vegetables so powerful is that the nutrients are in a matrix of water, trapped water, bound water, and that's a very special electrical water. That's a whole other story about fruits and vegetables and the water content of these foods. We're supposed to be eating watery, rich foods. In any case, foods contain protein, fats, and carbs for energy, vitamins and minerals that direct the energy, water that provides a medium for the energy, and then, uh, unfortunately, these days, lots of uh, stuff that the body can't use. That's why you want to avoid, the, one of the reasons why you want to avoid those foods. In, in a way, when we eat those kinds of foods, because it costs us nutrients to detoxify, for the liver to have to work to get rid of that MSG, to get rid of those parabens, which are preservatives, to, uh, uh, to purify from the, from the flavor enhancers and the, and the strange chemicals that keep us eating the potato chips, those cost us nutrients. So in many ways, food today costs us nutrition. It doesn't give us nutrition. It costs us nutrition. So fats are the most energy dense of all the macronutrients, the big nutrients. Nature has the energy locked away tightly in order for the body to access all that wonderful, juicy energy that comes with the fats in addition to the fatty vitamins and certain minerals like zinc and selenium. Lots of very sophisticated digestive biology and chemistry has to be leveraged. Process begins in the brain. You want to think about your foods before you eat them. As you're thinking about your foods, your your digestive system mobilizes. It prepares to do the work of uh, the anticipated work of food dropping down from the mouth. So your digestive juices begin when you start thinking about your diet or thinking about your food. There's one reason why you want to pay not eat. At, uh, during lunch meetings or in the car or in places where you're distracted. So the process begins in the brain, then it moves to the mouth. The mouth is where you chew things up, your enzymes. You've got enzymes in your mouth, and, and the enzymes start to break up, particularly starch enzymes, also protein enzymes. And then it drops into the stomach. And we've been talking about the importance of stomach acid for helping the body process food, specifically fats. And all of this stuff that goes on in the stomach, everything that goes on in the stomach depends on acidification. 
the, the acidity is really important. If you have gastritis, that's a condition where the lining of the digestive tract is, is somehow wounded. That's going to compromise your ability to produce acid. Everybody, as they age, has a certain degree of this gastritis condition. Even if it's not noticeable to where it causes you pain, it's going to begin to suppress your stomach's ability to produce acid. This is really important. And also, at, the, at this level, this acid level, you're not going to be able to digest your fats as effectively. This is where a condition called hypochlorhydria or achlorhydria become very, very important. People don't realize how important this idea of low stomach acid, hypo means low, chlorhydria, hydrochloric acid, a means no, chlorhydria, hydrochloric acid. They use these terms interchangeably. You're not going to be able to absorb fats as effectively without stomach acid. That's because of this whole idea that when food leaves the stomach, it, it has to be in an acid state so bile can hit it. Without food being in a sufficiently acidic state when it hits the intestine, you're not going to get that big hit of bile and the, the pancreatic enzymes either. Secondly, because acidification of food helps kill bacteria and parasites and things that can get into the small intestine that can throw off your natural gut bacteria. This, uh, la this uh, second aspect, this natural gut bacteria aspect of digestive health is very, very underappreciated as an end result of messed up acid or achlorhydria or hypochlorhydria. Yes, hypochlorhydria, low stomach acid, can result in problems at the level of the bacteria the, that live in the intestine, the, the so-called gut microbiome. Poor stomach acid secretions is a major cause of dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means messed up gut bacteria. It's a very, it is a mouthful, I understand that, but it's a very handy word. Dys meaning messed up, D-Y-S, biosis, bacteria. Dysbiosis is messed up gut bacteria, and it is a major cause, if not the major cause, of all health challenges. This is where leaky gut syndrome begins. Leaky gut syndrome begins in dysbiosis. Dysbiosis begins, or one of the places it can begin, is in poor secretion of stomach acid. That means by making sure you're, you're supporting stomach acid secretion by uh, thinking about your food for one thing or using uh, uh, stimulating foods at the beginning of your meal like dandelion greens or horseradish, you can help protect your body from dysbiosis. Using apple cider vinegar with meals can help as well. Using HCL drops at the pharmacy or betaine HCL that you get in your ultimate enzymes. All of these can have a beneficial effect on the gut bacteria. So if you have problems at the level of, the, of stomach acid and, of acid in the stomach, you could have messed up gut bacteria. If you have messed up gut bacteria, you can end up with things like SIBO, SIBO. We'll talk about that here in our next episode. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Here's something else. Heartburn or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, acid splashback can be the end result of this condition of dysbiosis. This is very interesting when you think about it because if it's low stomach acid that causes dysbiosis, which causes the GERD, it's actually low stomach acid that is more connected to GERD than high stomach acid, which is a very, very interesting point, which we'll continue talking about on our next Bright Side episode. Thanks for listening. We're going to take a commercial break and come back with more good health information, some news stories, as well as your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here momentarily, a couple studies, I just want to get to a couple articles. This one was interesting, you're probably going to hear more and more about this one. Human gut study questions probiotic health benefits. This is from uh, the journal Cell. Through a series of ex uh, new research suggests that probiotics may not be as effective as we think. Through a series of experiments looking inside the human gut, researchers show that many people's digestive tracts prevent standard probiotics from successfully colonizing them. Furthermore, taking probiotics and counterbalanced antibiotics could delay the return of normal gut bacteria and gut uh, gene expression. Well, here's the problem. Not all probiotics work the same. 
you have to experiment with probiotics. In this particular study, they use what they call a generic probiotic supplement. I don't know what that means. But you cannot make an assessment on how well probiotics work simply by testing one type of probiotic supplement because there are zillions, well, not zillions, but thousands of different types of bacteria that live in the normal gut. A typical probiotic supplement is going to have 10 or 15 of those bacteria. You have to play around with your, back, with your probiotic supplement. This is really important. And also fermented foods should be used as well. Not just probiotic supplements, but fermented foods and also what are called prebiotics. In this particular case, there were no prebiotics used and they, did, they used something called a generic probiotic supplement. I would not pay any attention to this study simply because of this. I have seen with my own eyes and in my own life what taking a good probiotic supplement can do and taking a lot of it. And I've seen what happens when you stop taking the probiotic supplement in my patients and in me. So nobody's going to tell me that using a probiotic supplement does not benefit you simply based on a study that was done on a generic probiotic supplement. Again, it, it, and also it doesn't even say anything about these volunteers, 21 volunteers who, uh, who were tested in this very short two-month study. So you're going to hear a lot about this because it, it's kind of like clickbait. It gets your attention. Human gut study questions probiotic health benefits. Test it for yourself. If you don't get the benefits from a good probiotic supplement or if you don't get the benefits from a probiotic supplement that you're taking, experiment with different brands, experiment with different doses, Make sure you're using a prebiotic supplement. Experiment with different times of day that you take your probiotic. Experiment taking it on an empty stomach and taking it with meals. All of these can have an effect on how well your probiotic works. And if you don't get the benefits you want from a probiotic, don't blame the supplement. Try to play around with uh, the context that you use the supplement in. All right, let me do one more here, and then we'll get your phone calls. This is kind of interesting, I think. This is from Skin Inc. magazine, which is a trade magazine for folks in the skin business ingestible sunscreen body care from the inside out oh my goodness where did you hear that before I've been talking about this for years when I first noticed it when I gave people eye vitamins I noticed that they didn't burn as readily which makes perfect sense because all of these nutrients are stored in the skin the skin's an organ of the body just like they get stored in the liver or they get stored in the heart or they get stored in the lungs or the spleen or any other system in the body it gets stored in the skin your nutrients are stored in the body Drugs are not stored in the body, folks. Prescription drugs are not stored in the body. Flavor-enhancing chemicals that are in foods are not stored in the body. But beta-carotene is. Polyphenols are, the kind that are found in green tea. Phytonutrients, like phytosterols, are found in the skin and found in fruits and vegetables, especially the peels of fruits. And when you think about it, what's the job of these nutrients in the peels of the fruits? To protect the fruit. In vegetables, it's to protect the vegetable. So using phytonutrients, plant nutrients, eating your veggies, and also getting on a supplement program is the best sunscreen there is. Tell that to your dermatologist who wants you to slather on a toxic drug, a toxic chemical, and put a lot of it on in order to prevent skin cancer. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to Shirley in Florida. Good morning, Shirley. How you doing? I'm doing great. I have a question for you. Yes, um, I talked to you the other day, and you were hugely helpful. I got okay. some collagen peptides and bone broth, okay. and um, it's a brand called Warrior, and it's given me heart palpitations. And I checked, I, I you know checked, kind of monitored when I took it both times, yeah. and that's what happened. So what's what's up? Should I, what what's should up? I be huh? Taking? Now tell me the name of the yeah. product. The collagen peptides. It's and what was the collagen, other one? Collagen uh, is Warrior. Collagen, collagen peptides, peptides and bone broth, uh, superfood protein. It ha you know, if you're absolutely positively sure you've done the experimentation and you've done, you're sure that that's what's causing it. And I, I say if you're absolutely positively sure, um, because it, it, there could be coincidences that you're not taking into account. And right off the top of my head, there's nothing in a collagen peptide or bone broth protein that should do that. However, if you're absolutely positively sure, you've done all the experimenting to see, then I would say it would have something to do with an excipient in there that is a filler or something they're adding. Because it's not, the protein in there is not going to do it. But your product is not pure protein. There's other ingredients in there. And that's what I would blame. I'd have to see the ingredient okay. deck to be sure. Um, but I imagine if it's a good brand, they, they're not going to put too much stuff in there, like sweeteners or any. Is it sweetened? Are the products sweetened? Well, no, because I, you know, I looked at everything on there, and there's nothing. There's protein, Do you have it in front of you by any chance? Yeah, I got it right here. 
Yeah, Look at the it, ingredients. Uh, Look on the side okay. of the bottle where it says ingredients. Not the nutrition okay. facts, but the ingredients. Do you see the ingredients? Mm, I don't. That's what... I said that's supplement what, facts and amino acids, but it doesn't say... Yeah, you got to find an ingredients. They're going to put ingredients on there, and that's, what, that's where, where you'll have to go. Uh, if you okay. want, why don't you do this? Take a picture, send it to Ben at KSCO.com, and, make, and I'll take a look at it. Ben but without the ingredients, I can't tell you. But I'm still not convinced. You, you might want to do a little bit more experimenting just to be sure. That sounds somewhat unusual. But if you're absolutely sure that it's one of those, look to the ingredients. And then uh, if you want, you can send them to me, and I'll, I'll help you out. Okay, Ben at well, KSCO.com. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And also, because we had talked about because my body broke down and all that stuff from getting sick. And you had told me to help to rebuild my, um, my collagen Connect- and my fiber yeah. and all. And so that's what, you know, I eat great and doing all these supplements. Pretty much everything I've learned from you, uh, I've had a little tiny bit of acid reflux. I don't know what that's all about, but I'm doing. The, I mean, just listen to the show. Listen this. to the next. Listen to the next Bright Side episode. I'm going to talk about it. If you know, sometimes okay. there's there's collagen, there's uh, amino acids and peptides that if you're not absorbing them properly, or if you're not breaking them down properly, I should say, that might have an okay. effect. As I'm thinking about it here, um, there's some excited what they call excitatory proteins. Uh, or I'm sorry, excitatory amino acids, glutamine being the most important one, um, and glutamate that can have that kind of effect. But I would doubt that that would happen. I suppose it could be. It's so just back to yeah, just I find do it a, odd because do yeah, a little experimentation. Amino long. acids, okay. amino acids can be excitatory, and it's it would be unusual, but it's it is a possibility. Uh, see if you can make sure that it, that it is the product. And then why don't you give us a call back or shoot me an email, ben at ksco.com. Thanks, Shirley. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, I'll do it. Thanks, Lo. Bye. Okay, take care. Yeah, the, the, there are excitatory amino acids, glutamine and glutamate, two of them, that might be doing something like that, but I, I'd be surprised uh, if that's what it was. All right, let's go, to, uh, let's go to John in Michigan. Good morning, John. How you doing? Uh, good morning, John. Ben. Hey, what's Great. up? And I hope everything's well with you, too. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. What's I have going a on? friend that has uh, pancreatic uh, cancer, and she uh, has a couple of, has had a couple of chemo treatments. And uh, what is the protocol to help us build the body? To, uh, Calm the body down is the protocol for cancer. Calm it and strengthen it. Pancreatic cancer, uh, the pancreas is obviously it's your sugar processing gland, but it, it does so much work. And this is why pancreatic cancer is uh, the toughest cancer to deal with. It's because the, the pancreas produces all kinds of enzymes. It's it, it's uh, unbelievably vital for growth. And so that's why it's difficult to control cancer. Hang on, John. I got to take a break. I got to take a break. Don't go away, buddy. Uh, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side talking to John in Michigan, pancreatic cancer. John? Yes. Okay. So here's the deal with all cancers. Two things you need to do. Number one, you need to calm the body down, relaxation techniques, all the relaxation techniques you can think of, and then strengthen the body. And in a way, that's true about all health challenges. We want to get away from thinking of cancer as a special kind of health challenge. At the end of the day, cancer is just caused by cellular stress, period. A cell that is at its wit's end, it has been burdened and overloaded and toxified and malnourished for, and suffocated for a long period of time. It just goes into this ancient way of reproducing that allows it to utilize energy more efficiently. And so, and there's a couple of reasons for that that are interesting, but I'm not going to get into it. Basically, it's cellular duress which is what autoimmunity is, which is what uh, uh, skin problems are, it's what diabetes is, it's what all health challenges are. So what you want to do is you want to strengthen the body, you want to calm the body. And by that, I mean, I'm talking about the cells ultimately, but you work at the level of the body. How do you calm the body down? Calorie restriction, ketogenic diet, uh, a mental and emotional relaxation strategies, physical manipulation, massage, rolfing, hot water, Deep breathing, slow, deep breathing. These are all in the interest of calming the body down. Using spiritual strategies, visualization, all of these to calm the body down. Then how do you strengthen the body? With nutrition. By putting in a copious, generous amounts of detoxifying nutrients and all your micronutrients, and even to the extent of going intravenous. This is for all cancer, by the way, not just for pancreatic and not just for your friend, John, but everybody listening. So pound the body with nutrients, particularly um, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, glutathione, selenium, all to the extent of even not just orally, but even sticking it right in your veins. 
and then uh, make sure you're getting enough energy inducing foods without toxicity. This is where the ketogenic diet comes in because you get lots of energy from fats and you don't have to burden the body with the carbs. Stick into natural foods as much as possible. And as I said earlier, uh, keeping your calories down as much as possible. Caloric restriction, i.e. is what it's called. And then you might want to also try something like chelation therapy, which is where they put a magnet, technically a chemical type of magnet, into your blood and it sucks up all the toxins and the heavy metals and things that can exacerbate and cause problems with, uh, uh, can cause problems with, uh, um, de with toxicity and, and put a burden on the body. This is, for all, this is for all health challenges. Last but not least, getting some exercise, moving the blood and the lymphatic system, electrifying the body and improving detoxification through movement. All right, John, I know that's, uh, I gave you a bunch of stuff there, but they're all things that we all should be doing, cancer or not. Hope that helps, John. Well, I'm going to motivate. Sounds, anything, uh, anything else? It sounds really great, and I think sugar should be one thing to avoid completely. Key element. Key element. Get a book. For everybody who has cancer and for your friend, get a book called Spontaneous Remissions. It's a very empowering book. It's not, it's not, it's, it's case studies. It's not like a easy reading kind of book, but it's page after page after page of case studies of people who have remitted from cancer, who have spontaneously remitted from cancer. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There's a doctor in Traverse City, uh, Catherine Roth, and she has a book called The, the Good Fight, and she helped cure her husband of uh, um, incurable uh, cancer of the face and sinus. And one of the products that she recommended was Mariva, which is a form of um, turmeric. Uh, turmeric and, is uh, wonderful. Turmeric is absolutely if wonderful. You, if you ever get the opportunity to read The Good Fight, she's a medical doctor, but she's also homeopathic in her way of treatment. And uh, The Good Fight is a one way of, of people to get some uh, inspiration from uh, an incurable cancer. They told her at, at, at U of M that her husband, if they did a surgery, have a big hole in the space, and she cured him. She cured. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank and you for sharing that. And then when they wrote the oncologist uh, and, and, and the, the, uh, her doctor's a psychologist uh, and, and said, well, we found something that might help in your treatment, they never responded back. Not, no surprise. <laughs> no surprise there. All right, I got to go, John. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Elaine in Alaska, good morning. What's going on, Elaine? Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for your show. And I, I want to call another time and talk about your uh, skincare products. They've helped with like three separate skin issues with me. Nice. Uh, Thank you for the plug. Truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Great, great stuff. So, but today I was calling, I have a patient who she's in her uh, late 60s. She had a lot of health issues, but she's finally got her digestive system um, better under control. She's slowly gaining weight. She's about five foot. 10 and about 110, so she's slowly putting weight back on, but now her doctors are kind of pushing her to get the, uh, the shingles vaccine, and she's a little hesitant, and I wasn't sure what to tell her, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I don't tell anybody what to do, but I highly, highly disrecommend it, if that's the right word, the shingles vaccine. It really is kind of dumb, but however, if you're not taking care of yourself, Elaine, if you're living the standard American life and eating the standard American diet, it may be something to think about because shingles is pretty miserable. But I say go with building your immune system. Strengthen your immune system. Lay off the sugar. Use, the, use vitamin C, beta-glucan, nutritional supplements, etc. That's my recommendation. But if you're not going to do that, you know, you don't want to throw off the baby with the bathwater. Shingles is pretty darn miserable. And uh, if the shingles vaccine can even reduce your risk slightly, even if it increases your risk of other things because you're sticking stuff right in your blood vessels, who am I to say? But I, I think it makes much more sense to strengthen the body. Okay. Just my opinion. All right. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks, Elaine. Take care. All right. All right. Let's go to uh, Chris in Texas. Good morning, Chris. Welcome to the Bright Side. Chris? Good morning, Ben. Chris? Hey, buddy. I'm just trying to improve my financial predicament. Because otherwise, I'm just going to be a victim of, I, I mean, just another victim of, of the predatory healthcare system. So tell me how, well, you're, I'm, I agree with you. I'm, you're not saying anything I don't agree with, but how can I help you? So I don't have a clue as to how Where to, to start? find a medical professional out there that is not in bed with the pharmaceutical companies that would be open-minded about actually writing a prescription for these outrageously expensive dietary supplements. Because, I mean, let's face it, these dietary supplements are just, only for uh, the middle class and the elite. 
but not know, necessarily, uh, not necessarily, not necessarily zinc, which is one of the most important supplements you'll ever take. It'll cost you a penny a day. Vitamin E, which is another really important supplement, will cost you maybe two pennies a day. Uh, vitamin C will cost you two pennies a day. So no, that's not necessarily true. To get on a complete program may cost you a little bit. It's worth it, I think. But you can do a lot for pennies a day. So that's not 100% Actually, correct. Actually, I, 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 do, I do agree with you. I, I have a doomsday bottle of vitamin C. It, I, I got it for $2. It was yeah, exactly. a close-out deal for $2. And it's uh, ascorbic acid crystal, so it's powder. It's cheap. And I won't even I, I won't even open the bottle. I'm saving this for Armageddon. <laughs> no, you you might be in Armageddon before you know you may be in a personal Armageddon before the world <laughs> Armageddon. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> so I'd be I'd be consider you're you're on the way to Armageddon personally if you don't use that vitamin C. I would. Now I, I should tell you. Here's the deal. Here's, well, let me just wait, say wait, one more thing. Let me just say one last thing, Chris. I don't recommend that you just take one or two isolated supplements. You should really need a system. So make sure you're eating correctly and then supporting your diet with uh, vitamin C and with zinc and with vitamin E and, and other nutrients, which don't, won't cost you a lot of money. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, by the way, isn't going to cost you a lot of money either, and that's got a lot of good stuff in it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chris. What were you going to say? I don't have any training in phlebotomy. I'm not a phlebotomist. But if I could figure out a way to take this vitamin C powder and shoot it up my veins, I would. Yeah, but I know, don't know a how lot of people do, do. Intravenous. A lot of people do. Intravenous. It's true. All right, I want to get one so, more uh, call in, Chris. Thank you. I okay. hope I helped you out. Appreciate it. Let's sh let's go to Shauna in Idaho. Shauna, we've got about a minute. Hey, good morning. Um, hey. Can you help me understand massaging, how that works? I went in, I had a knot in my arm, and then he put me on a massage table for 20 minutes while he was being, you know, busy. And okay. then by noon the next day, I, I was so sick and I still am. It's been three days. Well, a couple of things. First of all, massage relax helps break up a, a tight muscles, scar tissue if you go deep enough, um, but it can help relax tight muscles as well through the manipulation. It helps improve lymphatic circulation, which may be one reason why you don't feel so good because you can release toxins into the blood that have been stored or have been kind of stuck in the lymph system if the lymph wasn't moving correctly. Do you, are you uh, any kind of weight issues or anything? Or do you have a lot of body fat, extra body fat? Yeah, I. That's, I'm that's probably usually about 20 an, pounds that's an over. That's an indicator that some stuff is being released, maybe from fat or from lymph. It's not totally unusual. So how you might does wanna, that work? How does it, it work? It just gets replaced into the tissue when the lymphs aren't working, and. Well, the lymph will dump it off into the tissue, and the fat is a type of tissue that stores waste. So if it's been manipulated, you can release some stuff. Same with the lymph. If you're moving the lymph around, a massage can do both of those. It's not totally unusual, actually. And there's also emotional things that happen when you, when you get um, body work done. Sean, I'm out of time. That's a very interesting question. If you want to call back on our next episode, we can kind of talk more okay. about it. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all longevity products and truth treatments.com for our truth skin health products truth treatments.com thanks for listening to the bright side i'm pharmacist ben have a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later bye for now